Israeli strikes in Lebanon have rocked Beirut's southern suburbs in one of the most intense nights of attacks since conflict picked up with Hezbollah in October last year. Lebanon State News Agency says Israel launched 17 airstrikes on that area over a few hours, killing at least one person. Six buildings were also reportedly levelled, including a residential complex hit by four strikes that sparked a blaze. Attacks also ongoing in southern Lebanon, with an Israeli strike killing three Lebanese troops who were evacuating the injured near the village of Yatta. Hezbollah fighting back, launching a barrage of rockets into northern Israel. Explosions and air raid sirens were heard over the town of Naharia, with at least three people wounded after a projectile hit a road near the village of Klil. Meanwhile, diplomacy to end hostilities continues. Top U.S. diplomat Antony Blinken is on his 11th trip to the region since the war in Gaza erupted a year ago, and his last before the U.S. election in just in under two weeks. Speaking to reporters in Qatar, Mr. Blinken says he expects negotiators to get together to discuss a ceasefire in the coming days. A summit also taking place in Paris to rally support for Lebanon and its military, although Lebanese troops have limited impact in Hezbollah strongholds in the south. A French President Emmanuel Macron opened the event today, which aims to raise funds and mobilize humanitarian aid. La guerre doit cesser au plus vite. Il faut un cessez-le-feu au Liban. Plus de dégâts, plus de victimes, plus de frappes ne permettront ni d'en finir du terrorisme, ni d'assurer la sécurité de tous. Je regrette amèrement que l'Iran ait engagé le Hezbollah contre Israël, alors que l'intérêt supérieur du Liban commandait qu'il se tienne à l'écart de la guerre de Gaza. And for more on this story, Ross Cullen joins us live from Paris. Ross, we just heard that this event may aiming to raise funds and provide humanitarian aid. Now, some aid packages have already been announced from the summit in Paris. Well, Emmanuel Macron, you heard there in the introduction, and he did open this conference by saying that France is going to be unlocking another $108 million in aid for Lebanon to be spent on areas like uh, supporting families, making sure that children have enough to eat, making sure that children can continue to go to school. Hundreds of thousands of people have been displaced in Lebanon since Israel began its bombing campaign against Hezbollah targets inside uh, the country. We do know that Germany has also joined in with France, pledging more than $100 million in support uh, for the Lebanese people. What Emmanuel Macron is trying to do is trying to urge allies and those attending uh, the summits here in the French uh, capital, more than uh, 70 uh, countries and organizations there in attendance alongside the French president and the Lebanese uh, prime minister. What Emmanuel Macron wants is to try to hit the goal of $426 million that the United Nations says is needed urgently in Lebanon to support the population. Ross, of course, Mr. Macron, certainly France has been active in trying to reach a ceasefire in Gaza and it does have historical ties to Lebanon. What are the reasons, apart from these, that France is holding this summit in the first instance? Yeah, well, he's been calling for an immediate and lasting ceasefire both in Gaza and uh, in Lebanon. Um, Emmanuel Macron has held uh, conferences like this in the past uh, for Sudan uh, as well to support the Sudanese people still suffering uh, from the ongoing civil war uh, there. So he does uh, quite like these set piece international conferences that can be a focal point to bring many people together many different countries together to try to raise uh, aid funds uh, for humanitarian support for uh, Sudan in the past and now for uh, Lebanon with this particular conference. There are these deep ties, though, between uh, France and uh, Lebanon. It was formerly a protectorate uh, in the colonial past under uh, France, uh, gaining independence, uh, full independence in the 1940s, although French does remain uh, one of the key languages for many of the uh, Lebanese uh, people. There are ties between Emmanuel Macron specifically 
specifically as well. He went uh, in the aftermath in 2020 after the Beirut port explosion. You might remember he was the first foreign leader to go and try to pledge support from Paris uh, for the rebuilding of the port. And so he does take these matters uh, particularly seriously when it comes to uh, Lebanon, despite the fact that in the overall picture of regional actors in the Middle East, uh, the role that France plays is well outweighed uh, by the role of the United States. Well, thanks to that. Ross Cullen reporting live uh, from Paris.